folks, Joseph A. Sabari here, and I've been busy for just a week. You know, I had to clean up the house and do all this other important stuff. Had to wash some clothes too, so. But I did upload a few more videos on my channel just to keep it up. Anyway, I'm doing a movie review this week, which I actually saw the film last week as a celebration to my brother's uh, 31st uh, birthday that he had. Yeah, my brother Jason. And the family had gathered around that after the celebration we went to go see the movie simply Spider-Man Homecoming. This is the sixth installment of the franchise and also this was a quite different version of Spider-Man as we know it because this is part of the MCU Marvel Cinematic Universe and mostly because this time we get a different actor to play Spider-Man as well as Peter Parker and this time it's played by Tom Holland who was introduced in last year's um, Captain America Civil War And for those who don't know, of course, it's the other Tom Holland, not the director. Although, yes, the director did manage to pull a joke on him by acting like like he's... He actually posted a, a picture of him wearing the Spider-Man suit, so then, now you know. <laughs> but no, this is a different Tom Holland, as I mentioned in my uh, Captain America Civil War review last year. That's um, a British actor. And he's very young, definitely has talents, and this was going for a whole different look of him because this time, once again, he's he's in high school, he's in a sophomore, but all the students, which unfortunately doesn't feature Gwen Stacy, nor Mary Jane Watson, or even Harry Osborn, just a new set of kids mostly to join in for a decathlon that they're actually working on. So it basically has a bit of a John Hughes vibe to it. And this time we get another villain and it's played by none other than Michael Keaton. Which might be his best work since um, Batman. Because after all he played Bruce Wayne and Batman in the first two films which I really love, yeah, even though it's from DC, yeah, and I'm talking about a Marvel film right here, but hey, don't worry, because like I said in my Wonder Woman review, I love superhero movies, so whenever it's DC, Marvel, or any other company, they're always worth watching, whatever is good or bad. Hey, this was a pleasant surprise for me. I mean, after the last two Spider-Man films that we had, which is The Amazing Spider-Man that had Andrew Garfield playing Peter Parker and, and Spider-Man, yeah, along with Emma Stone playing Gwen Stacy, Sony and, and Marvel decided to team up once again, only this time they want Spider-Man to be part of the, the universe, as I mentioned already, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and they thought they they would work together as a team to uh, provide that, so that way we get to see more of the Spider-Man series as they went through. Because you know they've been having some problems, well, mostly from Sony's point of view, by the executives uh, Amy Pascal. They went for an agreement. They had to fix all the problems that they're going for and. With Amy Pascal being in charge uh, for production for this movie, they decided to uh, team up for an agreement to actually continue with the series as it follows along, but pretty soon they're going to lose the rights and Marvel will end up doing it on their own if that keeps it up. Because yeah. I know there's going to be some other follow-ups too. I mean, there's going to be some spin-offs for Sony with Marvel teaming up. Yeah, there's going to be Black Cat, Venom, and Sinister Six. So let's see what happens. 
if it turns out, because I wouldn't mind checking them out to see for myself. I mean, but who knows? <laughs> but, it comes across as a big surprise for me. I mean, I could definitely live, live the idea that they're going to turn into uh, a whole different uh, universe for, for the Marvel comic characters that we're getting, especially Spider-Man. Because I know, you know, we've been getting a lot of mixed reactions with some of the series that we had. I mean, we already have the first three Sam Raimi films, with the first two being the best. Well, even though the second one was was one of the best sequels ever made. While the third movie being a disaster. But, hey, I guess nobody was perfect, though. While well, we had the first two reboots, people got mixed reactions to them, almost, uh, almost in a whole different way. I know people even said that they were unnecessary. Well, that could be the case, but otherwise, um, I don't mind seeing uh, Spider-Man in a whole different direction. But hey, I would have had mind seeing a Spider-Man four if The Amazing Spider-Man wasn't made. I would have mind seeing The Sinister Six if this movie didn't get made. So that would have been the follow-up right there. So, But either way, I'm glad we got what we got. You know, because Spider-Man is definitely one of my favorite superheroes. That along with Captain America, Iron Man, Incredible Hulk, and... And I know, uh... I know my mother loves four, and um, and some of my family loves other characters. So, nevertheless, <laughs> I always love them, no matter what. And I do love four too. So. And I even love Doctor Strange and all this other stuff that we got. So, they're cool. Just as I love uh, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Yeah, the Flash, uh, Green Lantern, and maybe some other ones that they got for, for DC. So, anyway, let's get to the review. So there's Tom Holland, along with Michael Keaton, John Furrow, Zendaya, the singer, Donald Glover, Tyne Daly, who's been best known for the TV series Cadney and Lacey, um, also, she was in the film The Enforcer with Clint Eastwood. Uh, Marissa Tomei. And Robert Downey Jr. It's written by five writers and it's directed by John Waltz. The movie begins uh, during the Battle of New York. We meet Adrian Tumez, who's played by Michael Keaton, who's working with a salvage company that was contacted to clean up the entire city until their operations being taken over by U US Department of Damage Control that's run by Tony Stark who's played by Robert Downey Jr. So suddenly they wound up going out of business and was fired for, for their operation until they suddenly found the Jatari technology in order to build advanced weapons. Eight years later, we meet Peter Parker, played by Tom Holland, who's in his high school days, you know, as a high school sophomore. He's now being chosen to be part of the Avengers, you know, as Spider-Man, which was hired by Stark to become not only his mentor, but to actually uh, team up as we saw in Captain America Civil War to fight against Captain America's team and yes that's where we get to see like a, a video diary of him actually uh, working together with Tony Stark and and, their ex, and he suits up with the Spider-Man suit that he has and, and he gets to go around uh, fighting against the team so it was really amazing <laughs> or at this rate awesome 
And yes, Peter Parker does say awesome a lot in this movie, which, hey, I love the word, so I can live with that. <laughs> so he does get a bit goody-goody, two shoes, so, or around the movie, even though he, he is who he is. <laughs> but hey, you know, I, I guess I can understand, because why not? I mean, he loves being a superhero. He gets to do whatever he wants, whenever he wants. Anyway, well, part of this was um, his internship of actually being part of, um, of Stark's uh, industries. But unfortunately, he wasn't ready for it yet, so he had to deal with all of his studies at Midtown School of Science and Technology. So, so he wasn't fully ready to become an Avenger himself. So... He was mostly focusing on his school at academic decathlon, which was coming up, mostly because they're actually planning a um, an event that's going to happen in Washington D.C. But basically, he just spends more time just doing all these crime-fighting skills that he wants to do uh, during the day and night. So that's why he isn't. He isn't focusing on his uh, academic skills that he's doing. But that is until one night when he discovered that there's an ATM robbery that's occurring. And that's where we get to see the, the entire crew dressed up as uh, the Avengers by using all these uh, Halloween masks to actually disguise themselves. Uh, to go after a robbery, so Spider-Man, of course, joins in and, and just beats the crap out of them, shooting all these web shooters all around them and until an accident occurred and, ac and suddenly the advanced weapons that they got uh, were going out of control and suddenly shoots the, the building next door, which was a, a delicatessen store uh, that a manager works at. Uh, yeah, mostly because he goes around just to get some sandwiches. Yeah, yeah, it was a dis but he d at least he got to save uh, the deli store owners his life, so that's all that matters. Yeah. Anyway, Peter Parker also lives um, with his aunt May. Yeah, which of course in this movie she's very attractive and she's not the. Uh, the old grandmother type of character that we got in this one. And she's played by Marissa Tomei. And also, Parker has um, a friend who can be very annoying at times named Ned, who goes around trying to find out about all the secrets that Peter Parker has on how that he got to meet the Spider Man and the fact that. Uh, how do you do all these, um, all of the stunts and the technology that he has, and how he, he knows his skills and everything? Keeps pestering him around and around about that. Of course, he also has other guys too, mostly part of the team of the decathlon, which also includes uh, uh, Michelle Jones, who's played by Zendaya. Also part of the team was uh, Peter's love interest named uh, Liz, who was played by uh, Laura Harrier. Anyway, so um, during that one particular night, uh, Peter was invited to a party along with Ned, where their plan was they wanted uh, Spider-Man to join together with him. But that didn't seem to work out very well. So after that, he decided he was just going to go around as Spider-Man, just going after the criminals that took the the advanced weapons to, to try it out for themselves. So, which Adrian, along with Shocker, which I know there's, we're beginning to find out that there's actually two Shockers, because... Uh, he accidentally killed uh, one shocker that's named Bryce by using one of his uh, other weapons that <laughs> that went completely wrong and decided to use um, Schultz to be uh, 
the next uh, Shocker. And they're both played by uh, Logan Marshall Green and Bokeen Workbine. They're both great actors, too. But anyway, their plan was to go after um, the U.S. Department of Damage Control by taking all the stuff that comes from a plane at, from Stark's uh, headquarters because they're actually transferring all the material to their new headquarters that's far away from, from New York. So that was their plan to actually steal all of that and, and actually destroy Stark's headquarters. And as we know, Adrian Tumez is secret identity is indeed the vulture. Yep, a very uh, yeah the the vulture who who actually flies around and and use all the weapons and to go attack everyone and steal all the devices that they need. Then uh, Parker and and Ned decided to team up to find out what's going on and they actually found a tracker that that uh, Peter had discovered that actually was in the river just just as uh, just as Iron Man's suit suddenly uh, picks him up just when he was ready to go after uh, the entire game we had all the advanced weaponries and everything But of course, they told him to stay put because you know part of this uh, mission is actually uh, Tony Stark's uh, idea to actually stop him. So apparently, Tony Stark doesn't want uh, Peter Parker to be part of this. So anyway, Parker and Ned this had found the tracker, and they're trying to trying to remove the power cord and all this other stuff that's happening. And and suddenly. Uh, Parker decided to go back as uh, Spider-Man to go find out about what they're up to until he wants up getting stuck inside the bolts. Um, he also began to find out that his suit is filled with all the technology that he has. In, in, in other words, this is kind of like with Iron Man when he had Jarvis. Now he has uh, a voice communicator name which he named her Karen. And I can't believe this, but she was voiced by Jennifer Connelly. Yes, Jennifer Connelly from Labyrinth. <laughs> I didn't realize that was her too when when I found out about that. And but I thought it was cute. I mean, they, the fact that he had so many uh, options that he has and all around his entire suits, and he started using all these web shooters, but he keeps making all these mistakes. And he's trying to. Um, try to spy on all of, of Adrian's uh, crew just to go after those weapons and trying to find out what's going on <laughs> I thought that was really clever <laughs> yeah okay but I'll, that also leads to what happens during the next morning because just when they're getting ready for the decathlon that's happening in Washington DC um, he was trying to make it on time even though he kind of he kind of ditched uh, Liz you know, just when they were about to go swimming at the swimming pool and taking a break from studying and all this other stuff. He was trying to get there as soon as he can, but unfortunately he missed the decathlon and and suddenly all the uh, all the entire team winds up getting stuck inside the elevator of the Washington Monument. So Spider-Man came to the rescue to actually save them even though he was almost being attacked by the cops. But nevertheless, I mean, he was lucky enough to save their lives, got every, anybody out of there, and unfortunately he fell in. But then, luckily, uh, became Peter Parker <laughs> again. So then, the next day, he decided to go on his next mission, and this time, it's at the Staten Island Ferry. Where then they begin to find all the criminals that's that's all around the entire boat, where they're about to set off, off all the all the bombs and all all the all the weapons that they're going to use, and 
So Spider-Man came around to spy on them and and go and goes after all the criminals until something was going completely wrong. Just as uh, their weapons suddenly slice uh, the boat in half while Spider-Man is trying to go trying to use all of his uh, web shooters to to shoot around all the entire uh, bolts just to put them all together until Iron Man finally showed up to uh, fix all the damage but just when Stark arrives to to actually uh, find out what Spider-Man's been up to he decided to take the suit away from him and I know I mean he's been and even for Tony Stark's case, I know he's been treating him like like he's a fodder figure to him, you know, like trying to trying to warn him not to to get involved with all, with all this trouble that he's that he caused with. But of course, he never listens. With that aside, he no longer wears the suit, so Tony just took the suit away from him. So now he's just going to be plain old Peter Parker and you know, being expelled from high school. You know, just taking some time, you know, to learn all of his mistakes that he has and just continue studying and doing all that. Yeah, well, Michelle just goes around, you know, coming around just just seeing what they're doing and, you know, always saying all these sarcastic remarks like, like she always does. Uh, and not only that, but there was going to be the upcoming homecoming that was going on, yeah, there's going to be a prom in which uh, Peter was uh, was planning to ask Liz on actually uh, going to the prom with them only to find out what's going to happen next. And that's where we lead to the battle between Spider-Man and the Vulture. And, yep, <laughs> that's, just, that's what's going to lead to it. So towards the end of the movie and quite honestly I really enjoy the film I think this was an interesting surprise I mean granted though well I guess I could say that it could definitely be the best superhero film we have so far this year along with Wonder Woman aside but this might be right up there with uh, Spider-Man 2. I'm, and I would definitely say it's better than Spider-Man 3. There's no doubt about it. But it might be right up there with not only Spider-Man 2, but also the first Spider-Man from 2002. So I would definitely put it up there. And, and yeah, I can also put it up there along with The Amazing Spider-Man. And for the sake of it, I, I guess I can also put it The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Otherwise... That's fine. <laughs> but uh, I'm just going the, um, in between with the universe. But this one was actually quite different from all of the Spider-Mans that we got. I mean, because I know we had we, we had uh, Toby uh, McGuire playing Peter Parker and Spider-Man. And, you know, we had uh, Andrew Garfield playing Peter Parker and Spider-Man. So now we have Tom Holland. <laughs> And there you go. <laughs> but I thought um, Tom Holland did a great job this time around, and I was amazed uh, by his performance. I mean, yeah, he does kind of get a bit cocky and and does um, does get too goody goody for his uh, own sake. Yeah, and he does say awesome a lot and all that I just mentioned already. Well, well, um, this is the kind of Spider-Man we've all been waiting for after all these years so there you go and I thought he did it and once again he he's great um, it's also great to see um, Iron Man once again even though he's only there for just a, a small role yeah Tony Stark of course we have Robert Downey Jr. but I was so amazed by Michael Keaton's performance in the film too because this was definitely uh, a very twisted role for him to play another villain. I mean, after the two films that he did, such as, uh, or this Ray Free films, yeah, that counts for that awful 2014 
uh, Robocop remake that we got. Yeah, that was a bad movie. I mean, at least Michael Keaton um, got to play another badass role this time around. Because even though he did play the villains in Pacific Heights and Desperate Measures, he got to play a, a very sick and twisted role, but he can also be a sympathetic uh, at times as well. Because you do kind of feel sorry for him, mostly because, you know, he lost his job and, you know, they're not uh, letting him, not letting him clean up all the, all the damage that happens um, in New York, you know, during the battle um, for the Avengers. The fact that they're now um, working as a team to actually create all these advanced weapons from the Chitauris that uh, the Loki had brought in for the army, that they decided that they wanted to go after them because of it. So, hey, <laughs> it's not easy. Um, but I was really, you know, I was really pleased with the Bolcher character. I think it definitely shows that you can actually take a character like Bolcher that even if it, even if this character is very weak, you can actually make it stronger. And when, when you have Michael Keaton playing the role, that's how it happens. I mean, now you know you want to please the character even more now than, than you did in the comics. Yeah, that's how I explained it. Because this was followed by his performance in Birdman, which I wish he won an Oscar for that role, instead of Eddie Redmayne for his role as Stephen Hawking's in The Fury of Anything. Granted, he was good in that film, but I still think uh, Michael Keane deserved that award. I mean, even at his 60s, he could still play roles like this, and and he hardly ever gets an Oscar. I mean, that's such a shame. Um, but let's hope he does get one pretty soon, if he ever does. Um, also, Marissa Tomei did a great job playing Aunt May. I mean, I know people were sort of... Uh, a bit odd to having to see her in that particular role instead of being, you know, a grandmother type of role as we expected in the comics. And I know people thought that that was just another example of miscasting right there. But I guess I can live with the hot and attractiveness of Aunt May that we had to get because this was going for a whole different universe. So, um, Peter's friend uh, Ned. On the other hand, started to, I'll be honest with you, he kind of was, um, he, he kind of was annoying, even though he is a chubby guy, which I guess it's interesting too, because, you know, usually uh, fat people never get any respect they deserve, and and I, I can understand, you know, that, you know, he wants to, you know, he, he is excited that, uh, because, you know, he loves Spider-Man, and and the fact that he's he ex he's so excited over it that you know he just wants to bug Peter all the time about what he does. I mean, mo mostly because he's part of you know he's he's part of the internship that uh, Peter was assigned for. So I mean, but yeah, but the fact that um, he keeps ditching his friends uh, just so he can f focus on his crime fighting skills. I mean, that's probably why, you know, things are just not going so well, as it seems. But nevertheless, at least, you know, his friend does team up to, to fix all the problems that's happening. Like, he gets to fix the tracking or, and um, all of that. And also because, um, especially what happened when they found out that the tracker that they found was actually a bomb. So that's, so that's how... Uh, there was an explosion that happened at once they were up on the elevator of the Washington Monument and it got stuck in there. He, he came to the rescue for that. But he was okay though. I mean, yeah, he was annoying at times, but I can understand. I mean, there was even some crazy jokes like like when he was at the computer room, well, at the library actually, in, in the computer room, just trying to to check on the tracking device, um, what's what's going on, what the Bulger's up to next, and yeah, uh, Zendaya, 
As Michelle Jones, yeah, I know his her nickname is MJ, which is not Mary Jane Watson, of course. Because like I said, she's not Mary Jane Watson. So that's a good thing. Um, she was okay, but she kind of does kind of get a little out of my nerves here like she's just going around you know just I, I know she's supposed to be playing like one of those characters where she has no friends but she's just going around criticizing everyone just telling them they're losers or and the fact that they're hanging around you know spying on them doing what they're doing next I mean it's, she's just one of those uh, awkward type of characters that I don't know kind of unnecessary in a way, but I know. But I, I guess they had to go for something like that, because, like I said, they were, In fact, what's interesting was that they were going for a John Hughes vibe to it. I mean, like the Breakfast Club, or Sixteen Candles, or Pretty Pink type of scenarios that they're going for. I mean, yes, even there was even a clip in the movie where, where. Um, the neighbors next door were having a party while they were playing the, the movie Fairless Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> and Spider-Man was like swinging around uh, trying to go after the criminals and, and he wants to land into the pool and then yeah, swinging around with his web. So <laughs> that was clever and then all this other stuff that went involved. <laughs> Uh, but I know, I know, they had to go for that. Um, as for all the other actors, um, like Bokeem Woodbine and Logan Marshall Green, they all did a great job. Um, especially uh, Bokeem Woodbine playing the, the second Shocker. I mean, it's really interesting that he gets to play uh, the one who can actually shoot uh, his, uh, his weapon by, by uh, using the... By using that weapon that he that he can connect on his arm and just shoots around, you know, slicing the the school bus, you know, during that one scene, and doing all these other, <laughs> doing all these uh, crazy uh, stunts uh, just to go kill Peter. It was like, well, there's a, other cameos in the film too, which also has uh, Gwyneth Paltrow as Pepper Potts. And there's even, the, you know, once again, John Farrell. And it's interesting. I mean, it, it's and not to mention Captain America. Uh, Steve Rogers, played by Chris Evans, makes a cameo appearance. Uh, mostly as a video training uh, guy that, that they were playing uh, during uh, high school. Like at the gym class. And, and all this. <laughs> so... Nice add to it. <laughs> and, and it was fun. Um, I gotta be honest with you, it was really entertaining. I mean, yeah, it may be unnecessary, but I, I can see what Marvel's going for, and, and it works. And hopefully we'll get to see what happens next, once we get another Spider-Man movie t with uh, Tom Holland to continue with the journey. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so it's doing very well at the box office. Um, out of its $175 million budget that they got, uh, it's actually making even more now. Like it's going up to uh, $327.5 million. I can't believe it. Who would have thought that this would happen? And the fact is that um, it's getting surprisingly. Uh, positive reviews even though I got a bit of uh, mixed reviews from and mixed reactions on other people most of the audience so they were thrilled and they were pleased even though they were a bit odd about how this movie's going to turn out and and they even kind of dismissed it as being unnecessary but um, and I'm glad to see Sony is actually uh, fixing all the mistakes that's happening I mean who knows how how this company is going for, but this movie is basically going to save um, Sony's um, financial troubles. You know, after after years of having all these problems that they're going for, especially during the aftermath of 
of um, the hacker that's going on uh, back in 2014. So now, let's pray to God that Sony suddenly uh, fix all the mistakes that they make, so they won't go for this, this, the same disaster that Columbia Pictures had with Coca-Cola, you know, during the release of of uh, movies like Ishtar and. Leonard Part 6. So let's hope so. Because we don't want this to suffer. So anyway, that's Spider-Man Homecoming. And I give that film a solid 5 stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora. And I'll see you later. Bye.